Hello, welcome. This is Steve Suppletto from Erie Community College near Buffalo, New York. In today's presentation, I want to discuss print production workflow. So the purpose of this presentation is to provide new students with a basic introduction to print production workflow. I want to list the major steps, the activities, and the operations performed during print production work in their sequence order as it flows through the plant. We want to understand concepts of meeting the needs of the internal customer supplier relationships. You often hear about GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. And we want to discuss reverse engineering for planning, estimating, and scheduling. Print production workflow is what you do, how you do it, and when you do it, that's your workflow. Workflow determines how work will flow through your plant because workflow is dependent on the hardware, the software, the materials, processes, and methods available, each printer may have a different workflow. Standardizing the workflow allows for automation, which improves the efficiency and productivity. Just think about Vista prints. When they print business cards, multiple up on a combination gang run, these get printed and then cut and then packaged almost completely without being touched by human hands. The how is determined by standard operating procedures or SOPs and your best practices. Let's now illustrate a basic print production workflow using the concept of inputs, process, and output, which now becomes pre-press, press, and post-press. So here's the three P's, pre-press, press, and post-press. Uh, obviously, the when pre-presses at the beginning when you start is before the press. Press is the next step. It's during. It's in the middle. And post-press, as its name implies, would be when you finish at the end after. So pre-press from a process point of view is mostly digital. It's been that way for many years now. Press is still chemical because it's offset lithography and it works on ink, water balance, and chemistry of the fountain solution. And post-press is still mostly mechanical, cutting and folding. In terms of digital, pre-press again is mostly all digital. There is some more digital and press now in terms of the electronics. I'm thinking about the uh, remote control consoles for closed-loop inking and things like that. And in terms of post-press digital, we're starting and it has the least amount of digital implementation. Manual labor, the least amount of people are required in pre-press. There are some people required in the press room, but the most amount of employees in a plant are typically in post-press in the bindery. In terms of financial cost centers, pre-press is in the middle. The press room is the most expensive and post-press is the least expensive. Just guessing here, you might be, if you do your costing on a budgeted hourly rate, the press room might be over $200 an hour, pre-press might be $100 an hour, and post-press might be $50 an hour. And in terms of staffing, you have the least amount of people in pre-press. It wasn't always that way. When pre-press was a manual, analog, film-based operation, you had the most amount of people are in pre-press. You still have some people in press and uh, people in the press room, and you have the most amount of people in post-press. Let's talk about pre-press for a second here. This conversation assumes that there's no creative design, uh, that the customer has supplied you with a computer-ready art file, a PDF portable document format file. And this assumption is pretty normal. So most customers do supply the printer with a PDF. So once the file comes in, you have to do pre-flighting, making sure that the file is correct. The most famous pre-flight software is Flight Check from Marksware. Then you have to do imposition. A very popular imposition software is called Preps from Kodak. And then you have to do trapping, color management using ICC profiles. Proofing, typically done hard copy on inkjet using FM continuous tone. And then you want to have your 
SIP4, which is collaborative interface between pre-press, press room, post-press, and processes. This is basically presetting your ink fountain keys. And then finally, we have plating, CTP, computer to plate. Now we're into the press room. We have to cut paper, mix any spot inks, make ready the press, which is getting the register, which is position and fit and color. Once you do that, you get your color okay, your approval, you start running production, and then you may, during production, have to do some coating. That could be a flood coat overall, or it might be some type of a spot localized coating where you need a knockout. And then, of course, you have to do your wash up. Again, the point we're making here is that the press room is at the center, the middle, the heart of any printing company because it has the most expensive equipment, the most complicated processes, and you're paying your people the most amount of money. This is where you make or break profitability is in the press room. And then finally, we're at post press, sometimes called finishing. Finishing are those decorative embellishments that add value. Therefore, they're expensive, but the customers are willing to pay for that. These include things like embossing or blind embossing, die cutting, irregular shapes, perforating or perfing, scoring or creasing, hot foil stamping, hot leaf stamping, film lamination. This can be done with rolls or for smaller applications done in pouches. Post press also includes bindery. A bindery is typically folding. So if you want to fold a 16 page signature, you need three right angle attachments. And then trimming, you would have a jogger station and a stacker table. Gluing and padding. Collating, which is single sheets, one on top of the other. Hole punching or drilling. And then gather, stitch and trim for making saddle stitch booklets. And then some people do it in-house, but it's typically sent out to do perfect bound, which is hot melt adhesive. And then post press also includes distribution. You could pick and pack fulfillment from a warehouse inventory, envelope inserting, USPS, United States Postal Service mail tabbing, USPS addressing. 50% of everything that gets printed gets mailed. And this typical, the addressing is typically done by inkjet variable data from some type of a database file. Could even be as simple as Excel. Shrink wrapping, palletizing and stretch wrapping, and then finally, truck shipping. So finally, workflows are the work steps taken in production. There is often more than one way to do something. There's the right way, the wrong way, and my way to be humorous. Does the process matter if the end results are achieved? Do the ends justify the means? So some people will say, I don't care how you get it done, just get it done. And I don't believe that's the best strategy. I think the process is very critical and very important here. So the best way to do something depends on many factors. It depends on what quality expectations there are. It depends on your customer's expectations in the marketplace. It depends on the types of materials that you're using. Uh, certainly time, labor are important. Scheduling, how close are you to the due date? What type of equipment do you have? And probably the most important is, what are your people's skills in terms of their experience and knowledge? What are they capable of doing? So again, some people say, don't tell me how to do it. Just tell me what you want. But if I'm a professional and an expert, I should know how to do it. Uh, so we have to be careful about micromanaging. But at the same time, we want to make sure that the best practices are defined. And again, thank you. I appreciate your attendance and participation in this presentation. Hopefully you found it interesting and informative. And I welcome and encourage you to provide feedback for continuous improvement. Until we meet again, have a good day. Bye now.